Hi everyone. So we're learning Shar HaBatacham with Hasidus in order to live with the Geula. So one of the things that we know about the Geula is that we are going to recognize the oneness of Hashem, okay? And strengthening our trust in Hashem helps us recognize the oneness of Hashem. So this is a wonderful place where we really see that living with the Geula actually happens through our avoda, through us living with Batachan, we recognize one of the Hashem. That is what happens in the Geula. So we're doing it. We're doing Geula by strengthening our trust, which is, is a pretty amazing thing. And I just want to talk a little bit about this idea of avoda and Geula because we don't associate Geula with avoda. We associate Geula with rest. It's the eternal Shabbos. So you know, it's, it's a bit of an adjustment to realize that it's not that the Geula doesn't have an aspect of avoda in it, it's just a different type of avoda. It's going from good to better as opposed to going from a negative state to a positive state, okay? We don't have the Geula Shlema yet, okay? That's also obviously important to state. We're, we are waiting, we are trying, not just waiting, we're actively participating in, in, in welcoming in the Geula Shlema. And in the Gula Shlema, it will be all the good kind of avoda, of just getting to know God and going from good to better to better to better, okay? But the Rebbe said that the way to start that process is to start to do it now because it's available. So what does that mean, right? So let's just say like, you know, a couple hundred years ago and, you know, even going back further, there were actually blockages. There were things that could hold back the Gula. And the Rebbe said that we've surpassed all of that. And as a collective whole, the Jewish people have done the tshuva that we need to do to merit the Gula Shlema. So the only thing that really is lacking now is us getting on board, us opening our eyes, us realizing the opportunity that's in front of us. That's what the Rebbe's been saying over and over and over and over again. So, but then when you think about it, it's like, okay, so if the Gula is dependent on us opening our eyes, us doing the avoda of living with the Gula, that sounds like it could take a lot of time. But the good news is that because we have reached such a state where collectively the Jewish people have done the tshuva that's necessary and we stand really ready to live with the Gula Shlema, one shift in consciousness by one person can cause the whole thing to turn around. But it's important to realize that it's going to come from the Tachton. And I think that we could even see now how one person realizes something and they share a video like I'm doing right now and it goes viral and all of a sudden everybody shifts their consciousness in one moment. So the Geula being an Avoda, being available and that it could happen in any moment and yet it's go going to be a shift in consciousness across the entire humanity is all not a contradiction. Like we could actually see how that could happen in our times, okay? So my point is that it's important for us to do this work because this is how we will, this will be the catalyst for things shifting real fast. Okay, so now we are in Shara Batachim where we're discussing the benefits of trust. And Rabina Bahaya explains that one of the benefits of trust is that we're not gonna fear people, okay? Because when you recognize that everything is just Hashem, then people don't have any power over you and therefore you can be authentic. You can be authentic in your, your commitment to Hashem and not be afraid of how people are going to react, right? So it is a little bit of a paradox, okay? Because we do have a responsibility, we have free choice. We do have to, we have to act like a man, we have to be kind, we have to set boundaries sometimes. So our relationships are real, but they're also not a contradiction to the fact that nobody has control over our destiny, only Hashem. So, so what it means is that, and that Rabbi Bachai says in there, so you're not going to be embarrassed or afraid to, to reprimand someone. So what's like modern day language for that? You're not going to be afraid to set a boundary. What if in a situation you really need to say no? You know that something that's happening is not right and you need to say no. So a lot of times we're afraid to say no. We're afraid to make a boundary because we're afraid of how the other person's going to react. Okay. So when you trust in Hashem, you're not afraid to do whatever it is that you need to do in relation to other people because you recognize that if, as long as you're having integrity to your relationship with Hashem, which means asking, what does the Torah want me to do in this situation, right? The way Hashem communicates to us His will for us is through the Torah, 
right? And so sometimes we might have to ask a rough, sometimes we might have to consult our mashpia, but at the end of the day, our question is gonna be, what is the Torah, what does Hashem want for me in this situation? And we're not gonna fear other people, we're gonna do what we know is right. It's pretty amazing, it's really empowering. So let's do this together, Mashiach now.